Lord, we, had, we hadn't been here in about two Thursday, amen, but thank God we're here tonight, praise the Lord, amen, we're here to minister to your heart, minister to your situation, amen, give you a word, amen, um, 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 concerning your life tonight, amen, so we just thank God tonight on, on the day, amen, we are um, WLPS 89.5, amen, we are on channel 14.2 and 14.5, and the day's date is, to, um, is the 8. Um, 11th, um, 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 2016, amen, and you know what, if you can't get us on the internet tonight, you can go to um, YouTube and type in, type in um, Billy Locklear, amen, and you can um, stroll down and um, see how to tap in through YouTube, amen, so we're just thanking God for the night, amen, I'm by myself tonight, brother Rick, Rick wasn't able to be, be with me tonight, so I'm here by myself. My wife is here with me tonight, amen, but the, the most important thing, the Lord is in the midst of us, amen. He said, with two or three is gathered in his name, he said, there where I am in the midst of you. So we're just thanking the Father tonight that he is in the midst of me tonight, amen. I'm not by myself. I know you can't see him, but uh, I'm telling you what, he's here, he's present, amen. And I'm telling you, we cannot do nothing without him, amen, but through him we can accomplish all all things concerning his will and his purpose to upbuild the kingdom of God. Amen. If you're trying to do something through Christ Jesus and it's not concerning the kingdom of God, amen, if it's just benefit, benefiting you, I'm telling you what, God won't bless it, but amen, if it's concerning his work, his will, his purpose, amen, I'm telling you what, God will bless, God will anoint, amen, and God will make a way out of no way. Praise the Lord when you can't see a way. Amen. God always have the way. Amen. And, and you know what? We're just thanking God tonight for this opportunity. This is the day that the Lord has made. And David said, let us rejoice and be glad therein. Amen. This is another day. Amen. Where grace was renewed. Mercy is renewed. Praise the Lord. And God is rich in grace. He's rich in mercy mercy tonight. Amen. You can't bankrupt God. Amen. You cannot bankrupt God. He has enough. He's got more than enough to supply your need and meet your every need. Amen. You ain't got a need that's so great that God can't meet it. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you what, he can do all things. Paul said that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can even ask or think in Christ Jesus. He goes beyond your expectation. He goes beyond your mind and your desires. God can do exceedingly and abundantly. Amen. He can bless not only your life, but he's able to bless a generation of people. He's able to bless a nation. He's able to curse a nation. He's able to rise up. He's able to tear down. Amen. He told the scribes and the Pharisees, he said in three days I'll tear down this temple and in three days I'll build it back again, talking about the death and the resurrection of his body. Amen. He's able to build. God's able to tear down. He's able to bless you. He can curse you. He's a wonderful God. He's an awesome God. The Bible said he's a terrible God, meaning that he's awesome. Amen. There's no one like it unto our God tonight. There's no one that can do you like Jesus. Amen. Now, I'm telling you what, these idol gods, they they can't bless you. They can't curse you. Amen. But Jesus is able to rise you up and cause you to live again. Praise the Lord. So we thank God tonight, the Father, for his Son. And we thank the Son for the precious Holy Ghost that abides on the inside of every believer. Amen. Let us go to the word, to the, to the Lord in prayer. Amen. And we'll get in forth the word of God and we'll see what the scripture has on us for today. Father, we thank you. 
Lord, I can do nothing with them myself, but through you, God, the Bible said that we can do all things. God, we're praying tonight, God, minister. We're praying, God, that you'll deliver. We're praying that you'll accept the captive free. That's your will. That's your purpose tonight. And we're praying in the very will of you tonight, Father God. There's somebody sick. There's somebody going through. There's somebody, God, that's on the breakthrough. Amen. Of, of leaving this world tonight. God, I'm praying, Lord. We're just praying, touch, heal, deliver, and God to set free. God, we're praying tonight, God, for the anointing. God, anoint my lips of clay to speak the words that might be pleasing unto you tonight. Let that anointing break and crush the yoke upon people's life. I'm praying tonight, God, I need that anointing. I need that power. I need God the preacher. Get God that makes preaching so easy, God. Send that fresh anointing, oh, that we might minister unto the people tonight, God. We're just praying. We're asking you once again to touch, heal, deliver, and to set free, Father, and it's in the sweet name of Jesus Christ. We humbly pray tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we just thank you, God, once again for this opportunity tonight that God has allowed us, amen, to come on the way of TV, on the way of internet on the way of radio, however you're tapped in tonight, amen, don't turn that dial, don't turn the TV, amen, I'm telling you what, my God might speak a word to you that might cause you to come out, live, and might cause you to do more than what you have done for Christ, amen, so let's go to the word of God tonight, and let's see what the word has to say, praise the Lord, we're going to be in the book of Joshua, we're going to be in the book of Joshua, the sixth chapter, and I'm going to start or my, maybe around the verse 10 and read, read about four or five scriptures here. The book of Joshua, if you want to follow along, Joshua 6 and 10. Amen. Let's listen to what the Word of God said. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall ye shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once. And they came into the camp, and they lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose up early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. And the seven priests burned seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark of the Lord went out on continuously and blew with the trumpets, and the armed arm, arm men went before them. But the reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once, returning to the camp. So they did six days. Look at God's process. Look at God's method. Don't make sense. Amen. It seemed like it's unethical. Amen. It seemed like, amen, there's no process and no, and no production in what God had commanded his people to do. Amen. This is what 15 he said. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawn of the day and compassed the city about the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven days. It, 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 other, either day they was compassing the city once, but on, on the seventh day they, they compassed the city seven times. And it come to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets. Joshua said unto the people, shout, for the Lord have given you the city. Amen. You know what? It's always good to praise God in advance. It's always good to shout the victory when you're looking for God to do something. Amen. When you're in expectation and you're looking for God to move and you're praying and you're calling on heaven. Amen. It's always good to give God praise for what he's about to do in advance. 
Amen. It lets God know that you trust in him. And you, amen, and your faith is in him. And the city shall be cursed, even it, and all that therein. And the Lord, unto the Lord, and only Rahab, the harlot, shall live. My God, out of all these people, a harlot made it through. She and all her with her in her house because they hid the messengers that, that we sent. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed things, lest ye make yourself a curse when, when ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel curse, curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels and brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Look what God said. God said, Jericho's not yours. He said, I'm tearing down the walls and I'm giving you the victory over these people. He said, but the silver and gold, the 10%, he said, bring it to the treasury of the Lord. He said, it belongs to me. But listen what 20 said. So the people shouted with the priests, blowing with the trumpets. And it come to pass when the people heard of the shout of the trumpets and the people shouted with a great shout that the walls fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him and took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man, women, young, and old, and oxen, and sheep, and ass, and with the edge of the sword. If I would have a thought for us tonight, it would be this. Process before promise. Process before promise. Process before you enter into promise. Amen. The book of Joshua is not for everybody. It's not for those that are wondering. Come on now. The book of Joshua is for people, amen, that's ready to possess the Lamb. The book of Joshua is for people that's ready to enter into their destiny. The book of Joshua is for people, amen, that's ready to enter into the, into the promise. They're ready to enter into another realm with God. The book of Joshua is for people that's ready to fight a good fight of faith. This book ain't for everybody. Amen. It's not those that are satisfied in the wilderness and they're wandering in their salvation. This book are for people that is ready to fight the enemy and obtain what God has ordained for their life. This has been in my spirit for weeks. And I seem like I can't get rid of it, Sister Tracy. This is in my heart and it's in my mind because I feel like in my spirit tonight that God's people is still wandering. They are in the wilderness and they're wandering in the salvation, never coming to their purpose in Christ Jesus. Can I tell you tonight, don't get satisfied wandering in your salvation. Preacher, what are you trying to tell me? It's good to be saved. It's good to be out of Egypt. It's good to be in the ark of the safety with God, having salvation abiding into your life. But I'm telling you what, after salvation, it's time to grow. It's time to go through the process of becoming mature, becoming of age, and obtaining what God has ordained for the house of the Lord. I feel like those too many saints of God, they're wandering. And it's, and it's dangerous to stay in a wandering place. Saved but wandering. Saved but not committed. Saved but not sold out. Saved but not hungry. Saved and your thirst is gone. It's dangerous to wander 
here in the wilderness never coming into promise. But I want to tell the saint of God, amen, you must go through the process before promise. Do you know what? There's too many people that want to bypass the process and come into the promise. I want to tell the church, you can't bypass the promise. The Process. You must go through process before promise. Lord, as I'm speaking to anybody tonight in the radio land, I want to talk to the church tonight, and I want to tell the church, quit wondering, good God from glory. Quit your wandering in your wilderness place. It's time to come of age. It's time to grow up in the Lord. It's time to come into the promises of God. It's time to get off milk. It's time to quit wandering and lingering. It's time to come to a place where you're telling God, I'm ready. Whatever it takes, God, take me through process. Lord have mercy. I feel like tonight I'm talking to somebody. I feel like I'm preaching to somebody tonight. It's time to come out of wilderness and let's come into the blessings and the promises that's been ordained for your life. Amen. Process before your promise. You can't bypass it. God won't let you go around it. He won't let you, amen, go up over it and bypass it. You must go through the process to obtain what God has for your life. It will come with a fight. It won't come easy. Amen. Look at what God was telling Joshua. He said, take them around the city seven days, seven times. But on the law, but on the, when you pass the city, come back and sit down. He said, don't open up your mouth. He said, don't you shout. Don't mumble a word. Just walk around the city. Just walk around the walls. Look at the process that God took them through before he gave them the promise. It looked crazy marching around the city and nothing happening. It looks crazy, Joshua, that we're marching and we can't say nothing. You want us to march around this wall and go back to the camp? What's going on, Joshua? But it ain't good to question the method of God. God has a plan. He's got a way made. And it takes faith to follow the process of God. It takes faith to follow God when you don't see no results. Come on, somebody. I feel like I'm preaching to somebody. I feel like you're praying and ain't getting no results. Uh, and you're getting weary. Uh, I couldn't have tell you. Keep on praying. Keep on marching. Don't give up. Out of while, God will give you victory. That's the process that God, he's grooming your faith. He's testing your faith. He's testing your endurance. He's testing your patience. And you're praying, and it seems like nothing's happening. But I want to tell you to keep on praying. Process before promise. You will always go through a process before God releases in your life. And I feel like the church world is wandering in the wilderness, never coming out of that place and obtaining the glory and the authority and the power of God being demonstrated in their life. Oh, I feel like preaching this tonight. Preacher, how do you know that I'm in a wilderness place and I'm not going forward with God? Amen. I tell you some attributes. Amen. When, when people is stopping you, it might be a good indication that you're a wanderer. <laughs> let me say this tonight. Let me let me say this. Are you a wanderer? Are you are 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 you a possessor? Are you a wanderer? Are you one that are obtaining 
promise. Because there's two types of Christians. There's those that talk about it, and there's those that go get what God has for them. Come on, somebody. I want to tell you tonight, if people is blocking you, it's a good indication that you're a wanderer. Woo! Hey, let me go this way. It might be a good indication tonight uh, if you're a busybody in the house of God, uh, you are a wanderer and not a possessor. Lord, have mercy. I wish somebody give me an amen. Amen. If you're in the house of God uh, and you're backbiting, uh, it's a good indication uh, that you're a wanderer and not a possessor. <laughs> Boy, this is good. This is good tonight. If you're in the house of God and you can't give God a praise and you feel like you're dead, it might be an indication that you're wandering and never possessing. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight, Sister Tracy, but are you a possessor? Are you one that's wondering? I don't know where you're at tonight, but I'll come to tell you it's time to wake up. It's time to come out of the wilderness. It's time to come in your promise. It's time to obey God. It's time to believe God and get off the seat of do nothing and build upon the promises of God. Lord, have mercy. Are you a wanderer? Are you a possessor? If you're all the time talking about trying to fix somebody else's problems and never fixing your own, it might be a good indication that you're a wanderer and not a possessor. Lord, I wish somebody helped me tonight. If you're all the time worrying about somebody else's business and never taking care of your own business, it might be a good indication that you're wandering and not possessing the blessings of God. Come on, somebody. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight. But I feel like it's time for somebody to wake up out of their sleep and to arise and pick up the weapons of your warfare and go to war with your flesh and possess the power of God in your life. I'm using Joshua. And Canaan land is a metaphor for your spirituality in your life tonight. I'm using this as a backdrop. This has been in my spirit. It seems like I can't get away from it. I don't know why. I know why because I'm steady seeing God's people wandering and never coming into a place with God. Amen. I'm, I'm tired of seeing the church never possessing the authority that God has ordained for the house of God. And God lets me know in my spirit that they're saved but wandering, never coming in to the authority of my glory. <laughs> Glory to God. We got too much people in the house of God that's bickering and complaining and never doing nothing for the kingdom of God. Instead of being on the wall, they's off the wall and they's talking about them that's on the wall. If you're in that category tonight, it might be a good indication that you are wondering has not possessing. What causes Christian people to act in this manner? I'll tell you what the problem is. They're not mature. They're not growing. They're not fighting. They're not thirsty. And they and they satisfied with the wilderness instead of inheriting the promise. Lord, I don't know who I'm preaching to. But I feel like God is wanting to deal with the house of God and telling God's people, come out of the wilderness. You save. I am called you out of Egypt. I'm leading you through the wilderness. Your wilderness is not for you to stay in. 
The desert place is only a place of passing through process that will not bring you to promise. But people is just being trapped in the wilderness and they're never coming into promise. Lord, have mercy. Thank God tonight. I'm asking a question. I don't know your life. I don't know who I'm preaching to. But I want to ask you a question. Dig down in your heart tonight. Push away the fear and the unbelief and ask yourself a question. Is I'm wondering or is I'm possessing? I can't answer that for you tonight. That's between you and the Lord. But if you're always complaining, if your neighbor is stopping you, if you're never progressing, it might be an indication that you're a wanderer and not a possessor. The book of Joshua is for people that are sick of the wilderness and they're ready to come in the promise and they're ready to do whatever it takes to attain the glory of the Lord. This, ain't, this book ain't for weaklings tonight. This book is not for babies. This book is for people that's ready and desire to meet and the purpose of God. Are you a wanderer? Or are you a possessor? I want to tell the church, you got to go through process to obtain Canaan land in your life. Preacher, what are you talking about? I'm telling you what, if you want power in your life, if you want authority through the name of Jesus, if you want that anointing setting upon your life, on your ministry, on your teaching, on your singing, on your, on your life, you must be willing to fight the flesh and to mortify him and to kill him, to go through the process, to mature, to become in the place of promise with God. It's good to be saved. And if all you want is salvation, and if you ain't ready to go to work in the Lord, that you hang around in the wilderness and you sit right there, that's the farthest that you're going. But if you're hungry tonight, if you're tired of a wilderness place and you're ready to come into promise and the purpose and to find out who you are in Christ Jesus, it's time to fight the good fight of warfare. It's time to come against that flesh. It's time to come against them desires. It's time to come against them thoughts. It's time to come against whatever's hindering you from attaining the glory of the Lord. It's time to go through process that I might obtain the promises, the place that's been ordained for your life. I want to tell the church, I want to tell you that's upon the, this, 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 this ministry tonight, there's a place for you. There is an anointing. There is an authority that God wants to set on your life that will cause you to build the kingdom of God and to tear down the walls of the enemy. You can't tear down the walls in the wilderness. You must cross Jordan. Good God from glory. Lord, I don't know who I'm preaching to. It's time to cross Jordan. It's time to march against the wall and to march around it by faith and tell God, bring it down that I might destroy and take the land. I'm not talking about Canaan. I'm talking about your spirituality. It's time to turn down the outer man that you might possess the spiritual realm of God. Preacher, what are you telling me? Process, process, process. Process before promise. You got to go through process to find out who you are. Being saved. Come on, church. You know what? It, it, it takes salvation to make you home. And if God will save you and take you home, the process is over. You ain't got to walk. We're doing nothing for the kingdom of God. The journey's over. But if you're saved and you're going to hang in this light for a while, there's work. There's a job for that God is requiring you to do. It takes the process to find out, Lord, who am I? 
Yeah. It takes process, the Lord. What has I been born? What has I been called to do in this called thing called salvation? To build the kingdom of God. Does work to do, Christian friend. Why are you sitting down? Why are you lallygagging? Why are you hanging out in that place? It's time to get up and to press forward. Good God from glory. Lord, I wish the whole church of Robinson County could understand that God is wanting to give you purpose. He didn't save you to hang out in your wilderness place, to hang out in the He called you. He told you to come through, cross Jordan, and obtain his purpose, his glory, his destiny for your life. It takes process. It takes process to find out, Lord, who am I? It takes time. It takes digging. It takes prayer. It takes fasting. It takes talking to God. It takes being hungry and wanting to, and having a zeal for the kingdom work of God. We got too many Christians, Sister Tracy, that's sitting down and not working. There's so much work to do, but yet we're out of mind. We're satisfied with wilderness. We're satisfied with just being saved. You want to go home, but you don't want to labor for him. You want what he has, but you ain't willing to sacrifice. Shut up. You want his power, but you ain't willing to, to do what it takes to walk in that place with God. I believe, there's a, I believe half of the church world is in a place of wilderness and they satisfied. Right where they at. But I ain't talking to them that's satisfied. I'm talking to them that's ready. I'm talking to them, amen, that'll listen to the pastor, listen to the word of the Lord, and let the word of God dwell richly in their heart and obey the word of God and do what thou saith the Lord that you might obtain. Good God from glory. Are you a wanderer? Are you a possessor tonight? What category are you in tonight? Edible shit. What category are you in tonight? There's so much God is looking for laborers. He's looking for people to put in the vineyard. Instead of taking from the kingdom that I add to the kingdom and build the kingdom work of God. I wish somebody help me. It's going to take faith to fight. When God sent Joshua and them to spout out the land, the 12 came back. And the ten had a negative report. Only Caleb and Joshua had faith in God to possess. They came into Canaan land, and the other ones, God turned them back and said, you're not ready. Not only that you're not ready because you're mumbling and complaining. He said you will not obtain what I have. If you're a mumbler and a complainer tonight, you're in the wilderness, and the wilderness is what you want. But if you want what God has ordained, come on, let's rise to the cage. Let's put on the arm of God, and let's march into the spiritual realm, and let's take what to the people of God. Hello, bullshit. I'm a firm believer tonight because we ain't seeing signs and wonders and the power of God is not demonstrated because people love wilderness more than promise. <laughs> hey man, you can either like me or love me. It don't matter. I don't care tonight. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you are mumbling and complaining, you are a wilderness person and not a possessor. Come on, it's time to rise. It's time to wake up out of sleep. It's time to pull the, the bottle out of your mouth, baby. It's time to grab a hold of the word of God.
God and let's possess his anointing in the house of God. It's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. God has put this on my heart. God has been on my spirit for a long time and it seemed like I cannot get away from this. Because there's too many people that are saved and not growing. There's too many people that love the wilderness rather than promise because you know why, preacher? Because it's going to cost you to enter in. It's going to cost you to go through process. It's going to cost you something. You're going to have to fight the enemy. You're going to have to fight the warfare of your mind. You're going to have to fight that demon. You're going to have to fight that flesh. You're going to have to fight that thing that's weighing you down. you got to overcome it before you enter in. And I know what the devil's telling you. Amen. It's not worth the fight. Stay right where you at. Keep on bickering. Keep on having the root of bitterness. Amen. Keep on talking about your neighbor. Keep on letting that one stop you. Stay right there. And you won't go nowhere. But if you're ready. Good God from glory. It's time to fight the good fight of faith. And to enter in. Process. Before promise. God told Joshua, march around the wall. One time a day, shut your mouth, hold your peace, go back to the camp. God had a method. He had a strategy. He had a plan that he didn't fill them all in about what he was doing. All God wanted them to do was to obey. Don't be scared of your giant. Don't be scared of your enemy. I'm going to destroy it. All you got to do is obey my word, and I will give you what I'm said you can have. Just obey my word and just walk by faith, and I'll give you what I have ordained for your life. March around the wall. Process. March around the hold your peace process. Don't say nothing yet. Just, 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 just obey. And the Bible said on the seventh day, they marched around the wall seven times. And the Bible said on the last day, on the last march, he gave the commandment. They blew the horns. He said, shout with the voice of triumphant. And the Bible said that the walls came down flat. And the enemy was for the prey. And they went in and they took the land. And they entered into promise. Who is I'm preaching to tonight? You got to keep on marching. Don't get weary. Don't give up. Don't get disheartened. I know God ain't filling you in on every detail. It's not by sight. It's by faith. Keep on marching. Keep on being obedient. Keep on loving God. And at a while, God is going to give you that desire. Bring you into purpose. Elevate your spirituality. Bring you up into a place that you can operate in the supernatural realm of God. God can't release his anointing on little babies. Come on now. <laughs> he ain't going to give the wanderers his power. Oh, they're saved but weak. They're saved, but not concerned. They save, but ain't in their end. I want to tell God's people, if you want what he's got, get up, cross Jordan, baby, and enter in. And when you cross it, be ready to fight. But God's going to give you the victory. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but God is telling you, child of God, it's time to grow up. I know I got the clothes. It's time to mature. You got to quit letting people tear your spirit down. Let them talk about you. It don't matter what they think about you, but it's what God thinks about your salvation. Quit
Quit letting people tear your spirit down and cause you to back up. Go for it. Shake people, baby, because people are always going to be people. People's always going to talk about you. Them wanderers, they always going to talk about you. They always going to put you down because you a possessor and not a wanderer. Amen. They stuck in a place and they ain't got enough of vision to see what God is wanting to take them. And those that are leaving them, they don't like it and they want you right there in their place. Safe and not anointed. It's on the way to heaven and don't want the labor for the kingdom of God. God told him, he said, pray to the Father that he'll send laborers into the vineyard. God ain't want lazy people. Can I tell you, God can't use lazy people. He only used those that's got enough of faith to get in the fight and to help build the kingdom of God. Why you think Brother Billy Lockley Ministries is telling you to give? Because over here, they're building, and it takes money to build. Why you think they was on the radio this after this, this, this the day, telling you to give your donations, to bring a blessing this way? Because this is a place that wants to possess, and they, and not, not a place of wilderness. This is a place where we're building and trying to encourage and try to do the will of God. We ain't wanting to tear down. We're trying to build, and God's telling the people, send your blessing this way because this is a place of labor. <laughs> Boy, this is awesome tonight. I know you don't like it. I know you hate no me, but that's all right. I'm going to preach it in season out of season. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'd rather tell you the truth and cause you to come out of that place than to tell you a lie. You stay in that place and you never find out who you are and what God demands out of your salvation. You think God saved you just to cause you to go to heaven, but I come to tell you, don't you believe? God saved you. Not only for the benefit of heaven, he saved you to bring you into purpose. To bring you into a place that you're willing to upbuild God's kingdom rather than to build your own purpose in your own life. God's wanting you to work. You know what I'm telling you? I know I'm not, Trey, Trey, I know I got to close. I got to open up the prayer line. But man, this is in my spirit because there's too many people is doing this in the spiritual kingdom of God. There's too many people doing this. And not enough of people bumping and grinding and trying to do what thus saith the Lord. God needs people that arise and say, God, send me. I'm ready to enter in. I'm telling you, I just don't want to be a preacher. I just don't want to stand here and preach to you. I want to possess power and authority in my life and in my ministry. I want to break the yoke upon your life, and I can't do it sitting down on God. I got to go through my own process that I might enter in. I'm using Joshua. I'm using Canaan land as a metaphor to talk about your spiritual life in Christ Jesus. Don't just get saved. Come out of Egypt and be satisfied with wilderness. When God has ordained you with power and authority and anointing, to go out into labors and turn down the camp of the enemy. Take what belongs to you and build God's kingdom and come against all hell and principalities of this world. <laughs> Woo! Help me, Jesus. Somebody's upon the sound of my voice. And you're weary, you're tired, and you're wondering why you're in the state that you are in. Might be a good indication that you are a wilderness person rather than a possessor. Lord, I got to close. I, I, Lord, I, Lord, you know what? You know what? I, I, I need to preach this another hour, but I ain't got another hour. Because I'm so passionate about this tonight. I'm so passionate. 
because I'm in the house of God. I'm going around in the churches and in the house of God, and I'm looking at God's people, and I'm wondering what's going on in the house of God. God. What's wrong with God's sheep? What's wrong with God's people? Why ain't we fighting and possessing and obtaining? We're so relaxed in Zion's hill when we're looking at Canaan land and it has no more glitter. It has no more purpose to it and we'd rather hang out than to go in and to fight and take what belongs to you. God said I gave it to you. He said it's yours, Joshua. But you got to go in, boy, and you got to fight. I won't give it to you. I am already gave it to you. But you got to go in and draw your sword. And by faith, you got to slew that enemy. It's yours, but kill the enemy. Could God from glory, that spiritual life, it's yours, but kill that flesh. Kill that thing that's bitter. Kill that bitterness. Kill that, that idle minded. Kill that Kill that thing what's ever killing you and holding you back from destiny, promise, and the reality of the glory of God. I feel like I'm ministered through the Holy Ghost to somebody's spiritual life. God didn't save you just for the benefit of heaven. Can I tell you? I know you ain't never heard that before. I know you ain't never, let me say it again because you ain't never heard it. God didn't save you, Christian, just for the benefit of heaven. Heaven is when the labors is over. Heaven is when your work is through. Heaven is when you fought the good fight and you can do like Paul. And you, now you can say, I'm ready to enter in. Oh, but, but if you ain't working... Why will you receive a reward if you're not working? I know I don't even want to make heaven my home. But while I'm here in this tabernacle, in this range, in, in this dimension, in this faith walk that I'm in, I must labor and press my way towards God. And I, it ain't easy. I'm going to tell you, it ain't all the time easy. You get weary. I get tired. I get frustrated. Come on, somebody. I feel like throwing in the towel. Amen. But when I'm looking at Canaan land that's before me, amen, the reward is worth the battle and the fight but Satan's telling you can't of them not worth it but I'm telling you it's worth every struggle every fight to enter in to God's promise who am I Lord I'll tell you if you come after me Lord what do you want me to do for the building of thy kingdom come after me and I'll tell you God, God, give me your glory. Give me your power. Give me that authority, God, that you said the church can have. i am got it for you. It's available. But come on, you got to come get it. I will not bring it to you. You must fight. You must, you must, you must sweat. You must fight the good fight of faith. And when I see your faith, when I see your endurance, when I see your patience, then I'll bring you into promise. I'll slew that enemy. I'll kill that thing in your life. And and I will release a dimension in your life. And I'll elevate you up into another place. And I'll give you purpose. I'll give you wisdom. I'll give you understanding. I'll give you my glory. I'll bring you into a dimension that'll call them that's wandering to hate against you. And to talk about you. Good God from glory. You know what I come to find out? Those that talk about people, other people. I come to find out that those that are wanderers and don't want nobody to do nothing for the kingdom of God. But I come to tell you, push it to the side. Don't worry about what man says. I ain't worried about what people say about this preacher. Good God, I got to close. I'm, oh, I'm well over my time. I ain't worried about what people say, talking about me. I ain't worried about what they, that they call me and what they said. I ain't worried about man. I'm worried about the work of God, and I don't want to come off the wall until the wall is completed. Let them stand at the bottom and say, come on down, Brother Marvin. I ain't got time to come down. Why would I come down and the work cease? 
cut God from glory. Don't come down. Stay on the wall and keep on building, Christian. Had a wild promise you'll enter in, and when you enter into it, you will look back and you will say, thank God for the process. Thank God that I went through what I went through, that God might bring me into this place of dimension. That's above. That's above those that's wandering in a wilderness place. Place. God bless you tonight. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Boy, I feel an anointing. I feel the glory of God. I feel like God is telling the church, come out of that place. I didn't mean for you to stay in there 40 years. A three-day journey, and you're lingering 40 years. Instead of climbing the mountain, you're passing about and never climbing. I didn't mean for you to wander 40 years. Three-day journey, but the because you mumbled and complained, you hung out in that place 40 years. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come out of that 40 year wilderness and let's cross Jordan. Come on, let's cross Jordan, church. Let's enter in into the authority of God. But I feel like preaching this tonight. Somebody's in the wilderness, and God said, Come on out. Come on out of that place. I got another place. You ain't satisfied there. A wilderness place of those that's got the bottle when they should have been on milk. That's that wilderness place. That's that wilderness. And it's time to pluck it out. And it's time to grab a hold of the faith by faith, the meat of God. It's time to grab a hold of the word of God and mix it up with faith. And let's press on. Good God from heaven. Let's press on, church. And let's see what God has in store for the house of God. Lord, have mercy. Boy, I feel this. Hey, God, I feel this tonight. Who is I'm preaching to? Who is the Holy Ghost beckoning tonight? Boy, I feel the anointing and authority of God. I feel like somebody needs to hear what the Spirit has to say into your life. Come out of that place and let's go on. Woo! Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Lord, I thank you for this word tonight. I thank you. I thank you. I praise you. I magnify you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, somebody needs to hear, Lord. There's a Christian that's saved, but wondering. Saved, but don't know who you are. Saved, don't know what you've been ordained to do. Saved, and don't know the power that God's put in your life. Saved, but not talked in, tapped in yet. I'm telling you, come out of it and come get what God has. He ain't going to give it to you, baby. You got the fat nail tooth to obtain. The prayer line's open. Prayer line's open tonight. I went over my time. But I won't apologize. How I won't get a devil no, no credit tonight. Prayer line is... 910-521-1726. The private line is 521-3101. Call in by faith. Call in, possessor. And tell you, hey, come on, call in and say, Brother Marvin, I'm ready. Brother Marvin, I'm desiring. Brother Marvin, I'm hungry, and I'm ready to enter in. Preacher, pray for me tonight. Go ahead, call it. You on the air. Go ahead, call it. Brother Marvin. Yes, ma'am. Hey, honey, you talking to me? Oh. You talking to me? Come on now. I'm ready out, ready to get out of this Come wilderness on. now. Ooh, shut up. And I am saved. Come on. But. Mm. Hey, I'm ready to come out of the wilderness. Praise the Lord. I'm coming out. Come on, sis. Talk to he me. He said to I didn't me. have to stay there. Come on. And I, I'm not going to stay there. God have mercy. Praise the Lord. Woo. Just keep me in your prayers, Brother Marvin. Woo.